Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Monday, February 15th. I'm Wayne Pratt. One-third of Missourians are eligible to receive the coronavirus vaccine. It's tempting for those who are not eligible yet to try to get their shots now, but... It's sort of like giving snow boots to somebody in Florida. It's wasteful. They don't need it. They don't get snow. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Phantom talks with St. Louis University law professor Rakaya Yearby about ethics and vaccine equity. That's ahead in a few minutes. St. Clair County is changing how it schedules COVID-19 vaccinations. That's after hundreds of ineligible people made appointments. The Belleville News Democrat reports an estimated 800 people who are not eligible managed to make appointments through a link and password officials believe was shared through email, text, and social media. County health officials say eligibility is confirmed prior to getting the shots, so no doses have been wasted. St. Clair County is changing how it contacts residents for appointments after they sign up for a waiting list online or by the phone. Officials say people should not try to sign up using a link from another person. The latest coronavirus numbers show cases are decreasing in the region. An analysis by the New York Times indicates there were roughly 520 new cases per day over the last week. That is down more than 25 percent compared to the previous seven days. Missouri has a daily positivity rate of roughly 6 percent. It's nearly 3 percent in Illinois. Illinois officials will face no criminal charges for mishandling multiple deadly Legionnaires' disease outbreaks at a veteran's home in Quincy. Tony Arnold reports. More than a dozen residents of the Quincy veteran's home died in the outbreaks. The state waited six crucial days before notifying the public of the first and deadliest outbreak in 2015. After WBEZ investigated the crisis, the attorney general's office opened its own criminal investigation. Now, Attorney General Kwame Raoul tells WBEZ that after reviewing the case, his office is closing the matter without indicting anyone. Sometimes the evidence is just not going to lead you there. That doesn't mean it wasn't worthwhile to investigate in the first place. Last year, Raul's office settled with the 12 families who sued the state for negligence over the deaths of their loved ones. I'm Tony Arnold. College campuses can be especially isolating for veteran students, but a new center at Southern Illinois University Edwardsville aims to deal with that. St. Louis Public Radio's Eric Schmidt reports the center is designed to help with the transfer to higher education after military service. Talisha Reinhardt remembers what it was like when she transitioned to college after four years in the Navy. I can still just remember how it felt and like looking for anybody that was a veteran just to cling on to. She says the change is hard because college doesn't have the same structure as the military and other students don't understand the military experience. Reinhardt now coordinates services at SIUE's new Military and Veterans Resource Center. She says the university has offered services in the past, but not in a central location. Now I'm seeing their face. Now I'm seeing what it is that they actually need because they have a place to come to to address that. Reinhardt says she hopes the center will help SIUE's veteran students feel more connected. I'm Eric Schmid, St. Louis Public Radio. Developers of a high-profile mixed-use project in Midtown St. Louis are planning to open more elements to the public around mid-year. Office tenants have already moved into City Foundry. It's across from the IKEA building along Vandeventer Avenue. But the opening of a grocery store and a food hall has been delayed because of the pandemic. Will Smith is with New and Found, which is handling development of the project. It's just about timing. It's making sure that we're not putting our tenants in a situation where they gear up and get started and spend money and hire people. And then we're in a situation where customers can't come in and customers can't purchase. The first phase has a price tag of roughly $220 million. Work is expected to get underway this year on phase two of City Foundry. About one-third of Missouri's six million residents are eligible to receive the coronavirus vaccine if they can find it. 
The limited supply has critics worried the door could be shut on poor people and people of color. Many work in essential jobs. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton talks with Rakaya Yearby, co-founder and director of the St. Louis University Institute for Healing, Justice and Equity, about the ethics of receiving the coronavirus vaccine. I read an article in the Scientific American that claimed people working from home should wait for the vaccine to be given to other people who have to go out into public to work, essential workers, grocery store workers. Is that a good way to ensure equal distribution? Um, I think it's a good start. Uh, more needs to be done, uh, particularly because we see people leaving their neighborhoods who are not at, at most at risk to go and take doses in communities that are most at risk. So I think we need to be very clear about where we allocate the resources for the vaccine distribution to ensure it goes to the people who need it the most. Right. And I think it's complicated. The system of distribution has been so chaotic and difficult to navigate. And on one hand, I'm seeing patients who have chronic health conditions, who are healthcare workers, who are trying to kind of get any way to find a dose that they can. Um, I know I've heard a lot of people cross state lines, county lines to try to get a vaccine. Uh, Is that ever okay, do you think? Um, I think, as you said, it can be complex. Um, What is not complex is those with privilege who can stay at home, um, who are rich going and crossing state lines, county lines, and taking doses that they don't need. So to me, it makes no sense to vaccinate people who are not most at risk. Because what happens is that you leave people out who have the highest rate of exposure to COVID-19. And so it's sort of like giving snow boots to somebody in Florida. It's wasteful. They don't need it. They don't get snow. Um, And so it's important to focus on the people who have the highest risk of exposure. And that's how you begin to contain and mitigate the spread of the disease. So what I'm hearing you say is if you can stay home, try to wait at this point and keep on staying safe. Yes, because in the end, and I think this is um, really clear, is that in the end, it affects all of us. And you who can stay at home, who does not have, and you don't have a high exposure to COVID-19 will be best served by allowing those who have increased exposure. Otherwise, it's just gonna continue to spread and mutate and be with all of us. I've heard a lot of doctors say to never turn a vaccine down if you're offered a dose. Do you agree with that? Um, No, and I say that as an African American who has a science background, um, and both of those inform my no. People have to balance uh, the ability to actually get the vaccine and suffer from the side effects, particularly for people who are essential workers and not and may not have the ability to take a day off after the second dose, where we see an increased rate of side effects. Um, And I think that uh, doctors are also not taking into consideration, again, people's lived experience through COVID-19. Many essential workers are not being protected, but they're being forced um, to get the vaccine while they're still not being protected. They still don't have masks, they don't have paid sick leave. And so I think it's very simplistic and privileged to say that people should get the vaccine if they're offered, not understanding that they might not have the capability because of employment policies that limit their time to actually take off, get the vaccine or take off because of the side effects of the vaccine. That was St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton speaking with St. Louis University law professor Rakaya Yearby. Our David Casares edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.